I can scarcely believe I'm doing this again, but there it is. What you're looking at is a bank of resistors. I just picked out some random resistors from my pile. These are the ohmage values of the resistors over here. And uh, as you can see, I hope you can see, they're all wired in strict parallel. Right? Strictly parallel. Nothing up my sleeve. And that's an LED right there, just off the stack. That's going to be our load in a moment. So these are the resistor values. 42 45.0, 46.7, 42.4, 219, 4.7, 4.7, and 19.2. Right? Just a bunch of random resistor values there. Okay. Alright. Resistors in parallel are calculated like this. The total resistance of the whole stack, no matter where you measure it in parallel, is equal to 1 over 1 resistor plus 1 over the second resistor plus dot 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 plus 1 over the final resistor. We all remember Ohm's law. The current is given by the voltage drop across the total resistance. Okay. Here's the resistor values again, and I've gone ahead and done the math, this math, using these values, and I come out with this for the total resistance, 1.92 ohms. Okay, got that. Resistors in parallel, ohms law, the resistor values, and the total resistance predicted by that formula, right? Okay, there's your resistor ometer right there. So let's see what we got. I'm gonna, let's hook it up to this resistor right here. Okay, this one. This is the resistor that says 42.5 ohms. What was our calculated value? Okay. Let's go across this resistor. Like that. What do we get? The same thing. Let's go across this resistor. What do we get? The same thing. Alright, so you cannot measure across one resistor in a whole stack of parallel resistors because you're always measuring across the entire stack of resistors. Okay. Now, there's a Simpson analog meter. There's a LaCroix digital oscilloscope. And there's a LaCroix current probe. Okay. You got that? Sorry, my assistant is out to lunch. And there's a signal generator that we're going to use for the voltage source. All right. So I've got the power coming out of the signal generator going into one side of the resistor stack right there. And then the other side of the resistor stack right there goes through that LED, which I hope you can see is on, 
and through the meter and then through the LaCroix current probe pickup back up to the function generator. Okay, so now we're measuring the current through this whole system with the LaCroix current probe and the Simpson meter, right? And in addition, I'm going to take another probe here, another probe from the LaCroix, and I'm going to hook it up across the stack of resistors, just like that. Okay. Okay, so with this probe, the yellow one, we're looking at the voltage drop across that resistor, right, according to quark 2. And then we're also looking at the current through the same system. All right, now you'll notice, hopefully you'll notice, that the voltage across the voltage drop across that resistor is exactly in phase with the current picked up by the current probe. Voltage and current are exactly in phase in a resistive element. See that? Exactly. And notice the value here. This is the RMS value. Whoops, sorry. It's a touch screen scope. I have to remember not to touch it. That's the RMS value right there of this signal, and it's showing, you know, it fluctuates, but it's showing around 7.5 milliamps, RMS, right? But the peak value is up around 14, 15 milliamps. Okay, C3 there, All right? That's coming from this LaCroix current probe. Now, if you took the voltage drop here, which is on C1. The voltage drop is from the maximum to the zero, so that's about 17 millivolts. And if you divide that by the value of our resistor stack, you get approximately the same value approximately as this RMS value here. It's not exact, but it's pretty close. Now, what happens if I monitor a different resistor? Here I'm looking at the one that says 19.2 ohms. Well, heck, let's just move it up to the 219 ohm resistor, like that. Okay. Now what? Guess what? I got exactly the same thing because anytime you monitor resistors in parallel, you're monitoring across the whole stack. You cannot isolate one resistor simply by moving the leads to it and Quark 2's multiplication by 8 obviously doesn't work because it's a special case when all your resistors are exactly the same value. This is the way that it's done. Okay, This is the total resistance. You apply Ohm's Law to that using the voltage drop across that total resistance and you come up with the correct current value. Got it? Oh yeah, the Simpson. The Simpson is indicating what? It's indicating 11 milliamps. Right? 11 milliamps. That's neither the RMS nor the peak value of a 60 hertz sinusoidal signal. And let me reiterate. In a resistive element, the voltage and the current 
are always exactly in phase in a purely resistive element. Always. Thanks for watching.